The Jersey Stitch, also known as the stockinette stitch for hand knitters, the Jersey Stitch is named after the island where it was first produced. Jersey Island is located in the Channel Islands between England and France. Traditionally, the Jersey Stitch is used for sweaters, but today it is also used on cut and sew knit pieces like t-shirts, tops, skirts, dresses, underwear, and tights. The Jersey Stitch is everywhere. This is the most common stitch in auto knitting and mass market knitwear. The Jersey Stitch is a weft knit structure and prone to runs. This is the front side and the back side of the Jersey Stitch. The front side is called the knit or the stockinette stitch, while the back is called the purl or the reverse stockinette stitch. The Jersey Stitch only uses one side of the knit bed. It's a single bed stitch. The river bed here you don't need. You can actually just take it off, which allows you to see your knitting better. This is what I usually do when knitting Jersey. The highlighted line is one course. The highlighted loops are secured by the row above it. The uppermost loops are secured by the needles and are still in active knitting. Whole garment knitting is becoming more popular. The jersey stitch is the most common stitch for whole garment knitting. A traditional sweater consists of separately knitting a front bodice, a back bodice, and two separate sleeves, getting these four pieces from the knitting machine and then linking them all together on a linking machine. A whole garment like this one consists of knitting all four sections at the same time together on the knitting machine. And basically a whole sweater comes out of the machine. There are basically no seams on a whole garment sweater. You can kind of see here on the sleeve, on the undersleeve here, there's no seam. There's a little bit of shaping, but there's no seam. Also on the side seam, if I pull the side seam apart, there's no, there's no seam. Basically on the side seam, there's no seam. You can also even see at the sleeve to the neck. So this is the neck. I'm holding the, uh, the neck. This is the shoulders kind of like right here. You can see that there's no seam where the sleeve and the body connect. Yeah, so th there's no, there's just no seams. The whole sweater is knitted directly out of the machine, basically. Here is my characteristic assessment of the jersey stitch. The knitting time is really fast, especially on an auto machine. Each loop stays on its designated needle and it doesn't move anywhere, which makes it very quick. A big part of how factories price is based on how long your garment takes to knit on their machine. Factories have a very limited number of machines and machine time is really valuable to them. The more time that your garment takes to knit, the less time they have for other customers. The stitch itself doesn't take time to program. Jersey is the default stitch on an auto machine program usually. If you're programming a jersey stitch sweater, you'll spend more time programming the shape of the sweater pieces than the actual stitch. Price is heavily determined by the knitting time and the programming time mentioned previously. Since knitting time and programming time are fast, the price tends to be pretty budget friendly. Other factors that affect price are yarn type, linking, and finishing details. Since yarn is sold by weight, this stitch is the budgeter's best friend. You will see all types of yarn from acrylic to cashmere in the jersey stitch. You'll often see cashmere and other expensive yarns in the jersey stitch because any other stitch gets wildly expensive with luxury yarns like cashmere. So you'll see this stitch in the cheapest garments to some of the most expensive garments where the difference of those garment costs is determined by the yarn fiber and maybe the finishing details and not determined by the stitch structure. The structure of the stitch is strong, but because it's fairly thin, holes can be common with wear and tear, which then creates runs. Since Jersey is a weft knit fabric, it's prone to runs as opposed to warp knit fabrics, which are resistant to runs. This is what a run looks like. You're probably used to seeing runs in tights and stockings. They can occur in any garment with a Jersey stitch fabric structure. They can also occur in other types of weft knit structures as well, like rib, jacquard, pointel, and tuck stitches. Jersey stitch strength also greatly depends on the yarn strength. A chunkier yarn gauge usually holds up better than a finer gauge yarn on strength. Drape refers to how the fabric hangs and moves. Because Jersey is a thinner stitch, it tends to have good movement and good drape. The yarn type will also be a big factor in how this stitch drapes. This is a really comfortable, no fuss kind of stitch, a moderately thin stitch that gives and is really comfortable to wear. The texture of the front side of the stitch is quite flat. The back side of the stitch, the purl side, also known as reverse stockinette, has a little bit more texture, which you can use as the front side of the fabric if you so choose. If you're going to use jersey and you want some texture, use the reverse side of the fabric as your front fabric. Another way to create texture in the jersey stitch is to use short rows to get the fabric to either fold or bunch over on itself. The jersey stitch is a single bed stitch, meaning only one row of needles is used to knit it, making it a moderately thin, lightweight structure. 
It can even be easily sheer when knitted in a fine gauge with a smooth yarn. Torquing, also known as fabric spirality, it is twisting distortion that can happen sometimes, especially with high twist yarns or single ply yarns, usually on single bed fabrics like jersey. For example, this swatch is torquing. It should be laying as a straight rectangle with clean 90 degree angles. Instead, it's distorted and it leans towards the right. The jersey stitch is really prone to torquing. It is usually an unwanted characteristic in a fabric. It can sometimes be intentional and incorporated into the design of a garment if you choose. Torquing is definitely something to watch out for with the jersey stitch, so keep your eyes peeled when doing swatches that the swatches aren't torquing. Balance refers to how the fabric lays and reacts to itself with no edge finishes. Jersey is very visibly not a balanced stitch. Uh, the jersey front side has more vertical direction threads and it tends to curl the top and the bottom edges towards the front. And the purl side or the back has more horizontal threads and pulls the left and the right edges up towards the back. Stretch is moderate. Horizontally, jersey has really great stretch. Vertically, it has some, but just not as much. The jersey stitch does not have the obvious creative versatility like the Bird's Eye Jacquard stitch has with pattern and print potential, but jersey does have its own creative versatility in garment and piece shaping. Jersey is one of the easiest stitches to knit odd shaped pieces. It's one of the easiest stitches to increase and decrease needles and use short rows to create really unique, fully fashioned pattern pieces or silhouettes. Jersey is the shining star stitch of knitting. The majority of knitwear is knitted in the jersey stitch. And when in doubt, you can't go wrong with the jersey stitch in a quality yarn. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about the jersey stitch and if you have any questions or comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified when new videos are released.